What's good everyone? So in today's video, I want to talk to you a bit about artificial intelligence and how it can probably help you to edit your photos quickly and with better results. You may or may not have heard of a company called Skylum. They make a photo editing software called Luminar that uses artificial intelligence to help you edit your photos. And they're sponsoring today's video. And when they asked me to test out this software and share it with you guys, I already knew exactly what I was gonna do, which is what I do with any other kind of gear or software, which is just toss it unapologetically into my own workflow. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's video. So seeing as fall is finally rolling around, I thought I'd dredge up one of my favorite photos from last fall, take it through Luminar and see if I can edit it in the same way that I normally do. And keep in mind throughout this video that even though I'm using Luminar to edit an entire photo from start to finish, that's not even necessarily how it's intended to be used. It's intended to complement a bunch of different workflows. So you could use it just to replace skies in your photos or just to make some basic tweaks and even out the exposure using artificial intelligence to help you. It costs like $70 and it works as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. So it can easily just be an addition to your already existing workflow. That being said, let's go ahead and dive into Luminar and turn this nice fall photo into an absolute influencer Instagram banger. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. So the first part of my workflow is always some basic edits, just evening out the exposure, getting the light and color where I want it to be. And Luminar includes all of the different tools that you'll need to do this. Pretty much anything you would find in any other photo editing software. You got your shadows, your highlights, contrast, curves, HSL, everything. I also denoise pretty much every photo I edit. And in Luminar, they've separated it out by luminosity and color noise. So you're able to denoise more accurately based on the kind of noise that's actually showing up in that specific photo. One cool feature that Luminar has for doing these basic edits is the AI accent feature. It's basically just one slider that applies a bunch of different adjustments to your image, like shadows, highlights, contrast, all these different features condensed into one slider. So it really just evens out the exposure and makes all of those adjustments that you would be making separately way faster. Of course, there are gonna be plenty of situations where you want to really have that dialed in control and do all of those separate adjustments yourself. But if you're turning around like a batch of like 200 photos in one day, it's really nice to have this one slider that you can just drag and it'll even out all those things and get it to a really good starting point for you. There's also an AI sky enhancer where it'll detect where the sky is in the image and then bring out some contrast and clarity in that part of the frame. And this is something that I normally do to most of my images, but doing it this way is way easier than using a mask or a key to first isolate the sky and then bring out that contrast. You also have this detail enhancer tool, which is basically just a more advanced, better version of a sharpened slider. So they separate it out by small, medium and large details and you have a separate slider for each so you can really dial in which parts of the frame you're sharpening and how much. It also includes just a basic sharpening slider and a bunch of advanced options to really refine the effect. And finally, AI structure, which is basically just a smarter version of the clarity slider. You can use it to bring out detail and sharpness or to smooth out the detail in an image. It's content aware, so it'll make sure not to over process certain parts of the image. And it's also human aware, so you're not gonna be making the faces in your image look really weird. And another thing to keep in mind throughout this video is that most of these basic adjustments and most of the adjustments we talk about later in this video, you're able to use a mask or a brush to isolate them to a specific part of the frame. Next, let's make some heavier, more noticeable edits to this photo using the creative portrait and professional tabs in Luminar. I'm pretty much just gonna glaze over the portrait section because I'm not a portrait photographer, but there are a bunch of different options for those of you who are. You can automatically smooth out skin, remove blemishes from it, remove that shine that you get from like really harsh light shining on someone's skin. You're able to like brighten the face or certain parts of the face like the eyes and all of these features you just move sliders. You don't have to go in and mask and isolate the eyes. 
Luminar just figures out where all these different features are. Next, let's talk about gradients. And these are an effect that I use on pretty much every photo I edit to draw the eye to the subject. You can create a gradient by using a different effect and just masking it to a certain part of the frame. But Luminar 4 also has a dedicated gradient effect. And what I thought was cool about this one was that you're able to adjust both ends of the gradient. So for example, I could use an effect that I use all the time and darken the bottom of the frame while brightening the top of the frame. Another really cool effect you'll find in this part of Luminar 4 is the AI sky replacement feature, where Luminar will detect where the sky is in your photo, replace it, and relight the photo so that that sky matches the scene. The effect is like super accurate at figuring out where the sky is and blending it in so it looks realistic. And there aren't a ton of options built into Luminar in terms of which skies you can use, but you're also able to load in your own photos that you've taken of different skies or that you found on like a stock image website. There are also a ton of different options to manually position the sky, blend it in with the horizon, make it more defined, flip it, blur it out. If you have a shallow depth of field in your photo, you can add haze, close up gaps in the key. There's a bunch of different advanced options that you can use to really refine the effect and make it perfectly realistic. In addition to the sky replacement function, there's also an augmented sky effect where you can add additional elements into that sky. So you can add a moon, you could add some mountains in the distance, or for this particular photo, to make it as influential as possible, I'm gonna add some birds. So I'll just go through all the different augmented sky options and find some good looking birds to add to the background of this photo. And I think it's worth mentioning that there's also a giraffe that you can add. And once you've added in your moon, your birds, your giraffe, you can make additional adjustments to blend it into the scene, like blur it out, or relight those elements so that they match the ambient sky. There's also a sun rays feature where you can add fake sun rays into your photo and they interact really realistically with the scene. If you move the light source around in the frame, you'll really see those light rays cutting through certain parts of the scene. And you also have a bunch of advanced options to make them look pretty much any way you want to. You can customize this effect a ton and get them exactly how you want them to be. Last year, I actually made like a four minute video just showing how to replicate this effect in Photoshop. So this is a much faster, easier option. So far, Luminar 4 has been like crushing it, doing a great job of keeping up with my workflow, but there was one effect I was a little worried about. It's an effect I add to pretty much every photo I edit and it's this blurred out diffused highlights effect. This was another one of my favorite features in Luminar 4, because usually what I would do is crack the image open in Photoshop, key out the highlights, separate them onto a different layer, and then blur them out. It's a bit of a process and definitely adds a few extra steps onto every edit. But in Luminar 4, I had the option to just add that glow using a slider. You can apply it across the entire image, use a mask to isolate it to a certain area, or do what I did and use a luminosity key to apply it mostly just to the brightest parts of the image. And this is great because it achieves the same effect that I always go for, makes it faster, does it with fewer steps, and keeps everything inside of one application. Finally, in this part of the software, you'll find a fog effect to add fake fog to the image. And I found this to not look great when it's applied across the entire frame, but to be actually really useful once it's isolated to a certain area. It's kind of like bringing the dehaze filter all the way down. And this is actually something that I do pretty frequently. If I have an image with like low clouds or fog in the shot, I'll isolate that area and bring down that dehaze filter to emphasize those clouds and really draw the eye to the subject that way. So that's just yet another way that Luminar was able to simplify a pretty frequent step in my process. The creative panel also includes like several preset looks that you can apply to the image. You have this dramatic one that's kind of just like a bleach bypass filter. You have the matte look, you've got like this glowy mystical effect, and you can also apply a lot over your photo. So these aren't really effects that I would use on my own images, but something that I know could be super useful for a lot of other people who like to use presets and LUTs on their images. Finally, let's make some finishing touches to the image. And this is where I would really zoom in, get detailed and like fix all the little spots and inconsistencies 
throughout the photo. First, I'll just go through the entire image and dodge and burn certain areas to even out the exposure and draw the eye to the subject. And this is pretty much exactly what you'd expect to find in any photo editing software. And usually the next step after that would be to use like a clone stamp tool or a spot healing brush to go through and cover up all the little distracting inconsistencies throughout the photo. But Luminar 4 has a feature called the eraser tool that's kind of like the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool in one. So basically you just select the things that you want to remove and Luminar 4 automatically decides where to clone certain areas from and stamp over the areas you've selected. It's like an automatic clone stamp tool. You're also able to just use a regular clone stamp tool to do it yourself in Luminar 4, but I actually found that most of the time the automatic eraser tool was a good bit more accurate and realistic than my clone stamp work. This saved me a lot of time because it's a lot faster than the clone stamp tool, but also doesn't give you that weird, like mushy, smudgy effect that you get with the spot healing brush. Finally, you're able to save any changes that you've made as Luminar looks, which are basically just presets within the software that you can apply to other photos in the future. That brings us to the end of my individual workflow, but there are also a lot of other features of Luminar 4 that I didn't even get to mention in this video. You're able to make even more fine-tuned adjustments to the light and color. There are a bunch of other sliders that you can tinker around with. In there, you're able to work with layers and layer masks, just a lot of different tools that I wouldn't use for my particular workflow, but that are completely accessible to you as well. So after editing this photo, as well as plenty of others that I just didn't use as the main example for this video, I can say without a doubt that Luminar 4 was totally capable of keeping up with my particular style and workflow. And it actually made that process a lot faster by combining things that I would normally do in a few different programs into one application. And with tools like the AI sky replacement and the eraser tool, the artificial intelligence built into Luminar 4 actually helped me out a lot when it came to speeding up normally tedious parts of my process. And even though what I showed you in this video is my usual process for editing my own photos for Instagram, where I'm very detailed and meticulous about every single step in the process for every single photo, I can absolutely see myself using Luminar even more if I was editing like a large batch of photos, using that AI to just even out the exposure, maybe replace the skies really quickly and edit like 200 photos for a client really quickly. All in all, there are a bunch of different uses for this software, so I totally recommend trying it out yourself and finding out how it can complement your own process. Even though this video was about Luminar 4, which is a program that's available right now, I wanna take a brief second before you go to let you in on something that's happening later this year, and that's Luminar AI. This is a new program that Skylum's coming out with later this year that's completely separate from Luminar 4. It's not an update to the software we talked about today, and it's focused on results rather than tools, and it includes a bunch of new artificial intelligence features that you can use to edit your photos. One that really caught my eye was Atmosphere AI, which basically goes in and creates like a 3D depth map of that 2D image and uses that to add really realistic fog or shallow depth of field into the image. That's something I'm really interested to try out on some of my like moody, foggy photos. And since there's so much artificial intelligence included in this software, it's capable over time of really learning your individual style and making suggestions to you based on that style, which has so much potential for so many different workflows. Once again, that software comes out later this year and there's a link below where you can pre-order it. There's also early bird pricing, so you'll be able to get it a little less expensive now than it will be when it comes out. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee on that product. All that being said, I had a great time today trying out this software using artificial intelligence to edit my photos. And I'm really excited to see where this goes in the future as this technology continues to evolve particularly with Luminar AI, and just see how this can become more integrated into our workflows as creators. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, learned something new, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram. I've been a lot more active over there recently, and I'd love to have you in that community as well.
That being said, that's all for this one. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.